Hallo Angelfreunde, es freut mich, dass ihr uns wieder bei unserer Angelreise nach Norwegen begleitet. Diesmal geht es auf die Insel Selvia bei Trena. Ich befinde mich hier oberhalb des Hafens von Stockwegen, wo uns die Fähre in wenigen Minuten abholen sollte. Ich hoffe, es gelingt uns wieder große Fische zu fangen und wünsche euch viel Vergnügen bei unserem Film. After we were driving all night, our Norway trip started with the ferry crossing from Kiel to Oslo. The Color Fantasy was leaving the port of Kiel at 2 p.m. Twenty hours later, the ferry, which also can be described as a cruise ship, was heading towards its destination in the Oslo fjord. At 10 am, we were one of the first vehicles to leave the ship and continue our drive to north. Along the roads of Norway you will not only find great nature. There are also sculptures of modern art. After a three hour driving we were taking a break to make a closer look of this moose which is over 10 meter high. This steel sculpture of the probably most well-known animal in Scandinavia was completed in 2015 and is 30 cm higher than the previous record holder Mac the Moose in Canada. After a half hour break our journey continued to Steinkir where we had dinner in a shopping center. At 11 p.m. we stopped in Mosjoen, where we were sleeping for the night. If you are driving to the far north, Mosjoen is a good place to stay for the first night. Top Camp Mosjoen is located directly on the road E6 and offers a wide range of different accommodations. Our cottage has six beds and bathroom included with shower and toilet. This accommodation is perfect for one night. At 5.30 next morning we continued our journey and arrived at the ferry terminal in Stockwegen around 8 am. There the ferry should take us to the island of Selvea at 9 am. But like in a bad movie we were informed that the ferry was not operating due to a technical breakdown and we had to wait another 9 hours for the next ship. 
first this information was feeling like a bad joke, but it was the bitter truth. Due to the great weather we were making a walk and explored the landscape around the port. At 6 p.m. it was time for a crossing to Selvea. The delay had one advantage, because we saved one hour of travelling time. Now the ferry was heading directly to the island of Selvea. After three hours the ship entered the island's port. Now our final destination, the Trainer Arctic Fishing Camp, was only a 3 minute drive away. We stayed in one of the new apartments, which were recently completed. This apartment with 85 square meters is perfectly equipped. After the large wardrobe is the first bedroom, with a single and a bunk bed. The also large bathroom with shower and toilet is equipped with washing machine and a dryer. A separate small toilet is also available. The large lounge is a good place to relax after a perfect day of fishing. Here is a top equipped kitchen with an oven, a dishwasher and a large fridge with a freezer. On the right is the second bedroom with two single beds. Next to it is another identical bedroom. From the balcony 
you have a wonderful view to the harbor and the sea. A rainbow was greeting us on our first fishing day. But before we start fishing, we would like to introduce ourselves. The boats are also on high standard. There are 8 boats available. We were using two of the 622 feet Querno boats powered by a 115 horsepower engine. All boats have fish finder with chart plotter and a Go Fish GPS system on board which can be used to locate you in case of an emergency. Now let's have a look to the large filleting room. It is a great place to fillet your fish. There are three tables where you can fillet your fish from both sides. Another important room is this great drying room where the wet fishing suits can be dried. Following a small room where each house has its own freezer. At 12 degrees and light cloudy, we were starting with both boats at 10.30 am. Our first destination was the Plateau Hergrunnen, 8 km away, which can be reached in 20 minutes on a normal ride. In this fishing area all hotspots can be arrived within 30 minutes. Around 11 o'clock we reached the Hergrunnen where the waves were still quite high because of yesterday's storm. We were targeting for large cod and coal fish, which were hunting for bait fish in this area. But we had to be extremely careful during fishing, because there the local fishermen had laid out their nets. However, be careful was not enough, because Sepp and I each lost a shed. Was vermutest? Also, da schätze dir mal so wie, so, ja, so wie deiner, ungefähr. Vier, fünf Kilo. We changed the spot after two hours, because the big fish didn't want to bite. Jetzt ist es Viertel nach eins. Nachdem wir es direkt am Haargrunnen versucht haben, in Wassertiefen bis zu 50 Metern, und mäßigen Erfolg, nämlich nur ein Dorf mit ca. 6 Kilo, haben wir gewechselt vor die letzte Schereninsel Selvers in eine Tiefe von 80 Metern. Und der erste Biss ließ nicht lange auf sich warten. Was auf, Herr Ziegene? Ja. On the first drift, Gerald believed a heliboot on the hook. Dritter Wurf nach zwei kleinen Zellachsen. Jetzt etwas Größeres. Brauchen wir noch keine 
Schätzung abzugeben. Doch die Fluchten sind bei euch beide. Für mich sieht es nach Heilbutt aus. Fisch steht. Kurz darauf konnte auch er nie einen Anhieb setzen. Wir wissen allerdings noch nicht, ob größer oder kleiner. Ja, doch ein Durchschall. Schön. Bravo, Erni. Hallo, mein erster Fisch heute. Endlich habe ich einen gefangen. Und gute 7 Kilo. Ich freue mich. Riesig. Es soll nur so weitergehen. Petri Heil, Jani. Petri, Dank. Fischkisten schaut schon ganz gut aus. Nach zwei Driften doch einige schöne Dusche in der Fischkiste. Fishing was also very good in our boat and Sepp was catching this fantastic link. Ich glaube, zum 11 Kilo und um die 12. Um die 10 Kilo. In the middle of the best fishing time I got seasick after a long time because I was too busy with the settings of the sonar. Sepp and I had to drive back to the houses at 3 p.m. Gerald, Tony and Ernie continued fishing and were catching fish after fish. Die letzten Meter für Ernie. Oh, uh, schöner Seelachs. Sehr schön. Sehr schön, Ernie, der ist schön. So, mein nächster Fisch, 7 Kilo. Wunderbar. Schaut es euch nochmal an. Und so geht es jetzt weiter. Mir geht es wieder gut. <lacht> Wenn ich meine Dorsch versorgt habe, einmal abgelassen, nächster Biss. Unglaublich. Etwas kleineres Exemplar, der das auch so mit nach Hause nehmen. Also die See macht uns heute allen zu schaffen. Trotz sonnigem Wetter, wirklich ungemütlicher Wellengang. Fische beißen. Nun konnte auch noch ein Lenk mit ca. 7-7,5 Kilo erwischt werden. Unsere Kiste ist voll. At 4.30 pm fishing was stopped and it was going back with a full box of fish.
Driving along the harbor, it's hard to believe that fishing wasn't possible at the open sea today. The strong wind between 35 and 45 km per hour didn't allow fishing far outside. Da es heute sehr windig ist, versuchen wir hier im Scherngebiet auf Heilbuch zu angeln. Und das ist der optimale Köder, hoffe ich. This shed didn't bring the fish we were hoping for, but this sling was a welcome change. Ja, leider ein bisschen erfolgloses Angeln hier in den Scheren. Aber weiter draußen ist leider kein Fischen möglich, weil der Wind zu stark ist und die Wellen zu hoch sind. No, Halibut didn't want to bite, so Gerald's boat had enough and was driving home at 2 p.m. Due the nice weather, Sepp and I decided to drive northeast to the Plateau Skallen. There we should be protected from the strong northeastern wind. At this point, the seabed drops directly to more than 200 meters. A very good spot where big sea monsters should be hunting. But beside of two redfish as bycatch and a small coalfish, we couldn't catch anything there. The forecasted bad weather was coming closer and closer. Sepp and I decided to stop fishing at 4.50 pm after a more than moderate fishing day. Strong wind with peaks up to 55 km per hour made fishing impossible the next day. We took the opportunity to make a closer look at the market for daily needs nearby. The small market offers a large range of goods. Before shopping, make sure about the opening hours, because the shop is only open a few hours a day. After shopping, I was hiking to a barbecue house on the hill, on the opposite side of the island.
when I was back from the little hike, I took a closer look at the other apartments. In this building there is the great 38 square meter apartment Vegard Brücken upstairs, which is perfect for two people. This couch could also be converted to a bed. The fully equipped modern kitchen invites for cooking. On the left side after the entrance is the bathroom with shower and toilet. There is also a washing machine. Below this apartment the spa area is probably the highlight of this resort. On the terrace there is also a gas grill for the guests. Indoors there is a sauna that can be used for relaxing. On the other side there is a small toilet followed by a shower. After a hot sauna you can relax in the great lounge or just play a game of darts with your friends. In these two houses there are four identical 75 square meter apartments where up to six people can live. On the left after the entrance there is a bathroom with a shower, toilet, washing machine and dryer. Next is the first bedroom with two single beds. Then there is another small toilet. The large living area with a fantastic view promises relaxing moments after a successful day of fishing.
The kitchen in this apartment are also well equipped. At the end of this room there are two more bedrooms with two single beds. The large smart TV is rarely used with such a view. Senior Empereur, Senior Empereur, Ram Tom 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 Tom. Heute gibt es Schweinebraten, weil wir Zeit gehabt haben, weil schlecht wieder war. Gerald and I didn't have to cook this evening because Sepp prepared his famous roast pork for us. After dinner we were going to the sauna and ending the evening in the 38 degree warm water of the jacuzzi. The next day the weather was better. We didn't leave until 10 am because the wind was forecasted to become weaker during the day. Around 10.30 we reach the north end of the island. Nach dem gestrigen Ausfallstag sind wir hier jetzt am offenen Meer in der Nähe des Heergrunnens und versuchen es hier auf Dorsch und Seelachs. Wir hoffen heute einige große Fische fangen zu können, da auch der Wetterbericht für die nächsten Tage nichts Gutes verspricht. Wir hoffen das Beste. Los geht's! So nach einer halben Stunde jetzt endlich der erste größere Fisch in 80 Meter Wassertiefe. Dorsch von 3 Kilo. Aber diese Größe setzen wir wieder zurück. Es ist jetzt 12 Uhr geworden, nach zwei kleinen Seelachsen und einem Dorsch mit ca. 5 Kilo dürfte nun ein etwas größerer eingestiegen sein, in einer Tiefe von knapp 80 Metern. Der Fisch steht am Grund. Die letzten 25 Meter. Schöner Dorsch. Während ich meinen Fisch versorgen konnte, hatte Erne auch einen längeren Drill. Ah, okay. 
Hør det kakket og bislet. Hør også den kakket. Der her. Leider muss ich jetzt auf die andere Seite rausfischen, weil das Boot gedreht hat. Ich drehe schon seit einigen Minuten. Fisch scheint wie am Boden festzukleben. Entweder durch außen gehackt oder vielleicht etwas Größeres. Mal schön. Die Vermutung hat gestimmt. Fisch äußerlich gehackt. Ist aber trotzdem ein schöner Ring. Sellachse um die 4 Kilo, die wir jetzt hier fangen können. Selachs um die 8,5 bis 9 Kilo. Gefangen mit Bergmann Pilker. Jetzt geht es hier Schlag auf Schlag. Der nächste Selachs in einer Wassertiefe um die 90 Meter. Ich bin jetzt leider verloren. Ja. Aber ohne Selachs Vorfach, ohne monophiles, ein längeres Vorfach, ist es schwierig, diese großen Fische zu landen. The fishing was great this afternoon and we were catching cold fish and caught again and again. Many of these fish were released because we didn't want to fill our fish box too fast. As you can see here, sometimes there was a really big fish, giving a great fight on the rod. Nächster Fisch bei Sepp, er vermutet Seelachs, da er im Mittelwasser, Mittelwasser gebissen hat. Es ist 15.45 Uhr geworden, die Bedingungen zum Fischen sind traumhaft. Die Fische wollen zwar nicht mehr so wie vorher, aber Toni konnte soeben wieder einen Anhieb setzen. 
und pullt den nächsten nach oben. As forecasted, the wind was getting weaker and weaker in the afternoon and the sea was coming. Jetzt ist es Viertel nach fünf. Wir sind immer noch nördlich des Haargrunnens nach der letzten Insel in Tiefen um die 80 Meter. Wir haben jetzt überlegt, in die Scheren zu fahren, da unsere Fischkisten wirklich randvoll gefüllt sind und wollen im Innenbereich noch auf Heilbutt probieren. We stopped fishing too at 5.45 p.m., but our fish box was not as full as Gerald's. The bad weather forecast was coming next morning. Rain and storm with squalls up to 70 km per hour made fishing impossible. We stayed inside the apartment the whole day and prepared a Wiener Schnitzel with fried potatoes and a mixed salad for dinner. According to this weather, a hot soup as a starter was the right decision. The next day it had stopped raining, but the wind was still too strong to allow a decent fishing. We used the time to visit the small island museum. There was hardly enough space for three people but the visit was a welcome change on a boring day. Then we were walking to the ferry dock to get a larger view over the sea. Despite to the strong wind, our German neighbors were outside on the sea, but they quickly realized that fishing today didn't make sense. At 12.30 p.m. the local fisherman Ott was inviting us for a trip on his fishing boat. For the first time we saw how a fisherman carried in his laid out nets. He was steering his boat to the plateau Revet where he wanted to reel in his net. On the way out he told us that the fishermen usually lay out their nets along to the depth lines. Thanks this information we were able to estimate the direction of the laid out net. After almost one hour of driving, we reached the first of his net. The boat is fully automated, so that it is possible to bring in the net by only a single fisherman. 
one net is between one and one and a half kilometer long. All in all, Ott has always laid out eight to ten net around Selvia, which he brings in and lays out every three to four days. He also told us that he catches around 150 tons of fish a year with his boat. In February and March he is also fishing for the winter cod at the Lofoten Island and spends six to eight weeks in a row on his fishing boat. A ray is not a welcome guest because it only destroys the net and cannot be processed. The Norwegian government no longer issues new professional fishing licenses. They can only be obtained from another professional fisherman. Of course, the price for the license depends on the quota, how many tons of fish can be caught within a year. Already the first anglerfish in his net would have been a record fish for us. We have never catched an anglerfish of such size. Now in the fall, Ott only is fishing for anglerfish and halibut. He chooses the mesh size of his net large enough that the other fish like cod or coalfish are swimming through. More and more of these fish, which are very difficult to catch with the rod, were coming on the boat. After the anchor of the first net was on board, Ott was steering to his second net about 500 meters away. If you are now having the idea of starting a career as a professional fisherman, you will have to dig deep into your pocket. For a boat of this size you have to pay about 15 million Norwegian crowns. In addition there is the professional fishing license for which another 4 to 5 million crowns must be reserved if you can find a fisherman who will sell the license to you. You must also have your normal place of residence in Norway. Then finally the first heliboot could be caught. Ott told us that he has normally 3 to 5 heliboot in his nets, but now is a very bad time for this fish. In total, Ott was able to catch 13 anglerfish and one heliboot with his two nets this afternoon. Thanks to GPS, the boat found its way home on its own. During the trip, Ott used the time to clean his boat and to fillet the fish. At the end, the fish were stored in ice until it can be delivered to the fish factory. After a boat trip of three and a half hours, we were back in port. Well, today we had our trip with Ott, our friend from Selvia. He was so nice to take us with his boat outside, north uh, the island. And it was a great pleasure for us to come with you. Thank you very much, Ott. Uh, it's not us usually that you take guests with you on the boat. Uh, sometimes. Sometimes, but for us a really new experience and a great pleasure and we found out how you, Your work is, is planned how you what you're doing the whole day and it's really astonishing to see How many fish you can get with net 
uh, especially today the Brive Lab uh, was really, according to our opinion, plenty of them. Because uh, when you go for them by pilking, no, <laughs> no, <laughs> you get no one. So, what do you think? What was uh, was it a perfect day for you today, or it was okay? Uh, uh, it's w it will never be perfect because <laughs> you will always want more fish. Yeah. So it's so the same. Yeah. You've got the same opinion than me. Yeah. Always more and more. <laughs> so, but uh, it was a short trip and it. Yeah, it's it a short okay. trip. Yeah, yeah. But so. weather was fine. Weather was fine. Everything has done. Yeah. No problems. No problems. No problem. No. Okay. Thank you very much, Ot, for taking us with you. And you can watch yourself on the video in December, maybe. Okay. Okay. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. After this great experience, I was cooking on the gas grill this evening, so that we could enjoy pork chops and fries for dinner. After it was raining during the night, the sky cleared up next morning and the strong wind of the last few days calmed down. After 9 am we were driving to the plateau Revet, where we had been with Ott the fisherman yesterday. Already in the first drift, Sepp had the first fish on the hook. Mittelwasser! Na ja, dann ist sicher sehr lachs. So drei, vier Oder ist diese Torsch aufgezogen, weil sonst hätte sie nicht mehr viel. Sehr lachs seitlich gehakt, deshalb hat er sich so gewehrt. Dieser wird aber wieder freigelassen. Jetzt gut eine Stunde am Revet nach einigen Seelachsen um die 4 Kilo wurden auch schon zwei Dorsche mit 5-6 Kilo zurückgesetzt. Und ruhig hagelt. Hagelt, ja. After many smaller fish, Gerald was believing to have a bigger one on the hook. Schön. Oh. Das ist einmal ein schöner. Ah ja, das ist wieder Bombe. Das ist der erste größere Dorsch. Den werden wir behalten. Endlich einmal was Gescheites. Das ist jetzt kurz nach elf. Nachdem ich meinen Dorsch versorgt habe, habe ich wieder um den Pilger abgelassen. Drei, vier Pilgbewegungen. Nächster. Seelachs, aber gehackt. Ja, jetzt ist da eher nicht einer eingefiebt. 40 Meter Heck nach unten. Dauert okay. nur ein bisschen. Oh, bleibst du da? Ja, das schaut ganz gut aus. Das ist der größte, glaube ich. Bisher. Ja, da kommt der nicht mehr runter, dass man sieht, so aufgeblätter Bauch. Den müssen wir behalten, der kommt nicht mehr runter. Auf diese Dorsche sind wir nicht aus. Gerci, dein Fisch! Because no big fish wanted to bite at Revet, Sepp and I drove around 2 p.m. to the Plateau Skallen, 8 kilometers to the south. There Sepp hooked a very large fish immediately. Hey, dumm ist die! Ich hock halt in! Ja, ich hock halt in! Ja, ich hock the fish had already taken almost all of the line from his reel. 
But before I could follow the heliboot with the boat, I had to wheel in my own line. Der stetig gibt's ja nicht. Ja, ist ein Boot. Ja, tu da mal was ja. Jetzt dürfte das Heft den ersten größeren Boot am Haken haben mit 130 Meter Wasserbüchel. Das ist kalt. Ich weiß nicht, ob der Bus ist, weil es geht ja leichter. Das ist sicher ein Bus. Ja, oder ein großes Hellax. Ja, frag dich das einmal. Scheiße, das ist er weg. As the fish was making another running, it was lost. Ah, scheiße. Also, we continued fishing with concentrations. Nothing could be caught apart from a nice redfish as bycatch. At 5 pm we finished fishing and were driving back home. Light wind and partly cloudy sky made the next day Georgios. After we got up at 6.45 am, we were driving south with both boats to the plateau Langtaren, 13 kilometers away. When we arrived at Langtaren, there was only one goal for us. We were targeting on Halibut in the many sandy channels. And already in the first drift we saw a Halibut of estimated 40 to 50 kilos, which was following my bait up to the boat. Unfortunately it didn't want to bite and after a short moment it disappeared again into the deep sea. Nach der zweiten Drift, circa eine Stunde nach Ankunft südöstlich der Insel Husoi, konnte Toni nun einen Anhieb setzen auf Gummifisch. Na ja, da kommt er. Na ja, da ist schön. Schön ist er. Toni was catching a nice cod of around 10 kilos which was released again. After hours of unsuccessful halibut fishing, Sepp and I decided to try it in deeper water of around 100 meters. We have now a plateau on the 90 meters and sofort a piece by Sepp. Wir vermuten entweder Großdorsch oder großer Seelachs. Ein Schwanz wohin? This cod was feeling larger than it was because it was hooked on the tail. Da unsere Fischkisten bereits fast voll sind, wird dieser schöne Dorsch mit ca. 5-6 Kilo wieder zurückgesetzt. Auch bei der zweiten trifft sofort einen Biss auf Überbeißer. On this underwater plateau we were standing in the middle of fish 
and were catching cod after cod over the next two hours. All of them were released again. Diese Dorsche fahren wir am laufenden Band. Drei bis vier Kilo. Nachdem ich meinen Dorsch circa vier Kilo wieder ausgelassen habe, bei Werner der nächste Anschlag. Fischen puppt sich als Selachs um die zwei, drei Kilo. Der geht wieder zurück. Nächste Dorsch aus 90 Metern Tiefe. After two and a half hours of cod fishing, we were driving back to the sandy channels to fish for the king of the northern sea again. In the meantime, Gerald's boat were driving back east to Selvia. They were fishing for cod and coalfish at the Plateau Skallen, but without success. Unfortunately, we didn't catch a halibut today. At 6.15 pm and a Giorgio sunset, we finished fishing and were driving back home. With such natural scenery, it's not so important if you don't catch any big fish. On the next day, the weather conditions were completely different and the wind was blowing with 40 to 50 km per hour. First of all, we were cleaning and repairing our stuff. After that, I used the free fishing day to run around the island of Selver. If you are running normally, you can circle the island in about half an hour. In the afternoon, Sepp and I made a short walk. According to the weather forecast, fishing will not be possible tomorrow due to the strong wind again. Es ist natürlich besonders ärgerlich, wenn du das schönste Wetter hast und der Wind ein Angel nicht zulässt. Windgeschwindigkeiten zwischen 40 und 70 km/h machen ein Fischen heute unmöglich. Wir versuchen das Beste daraus zu machen und ich möchte euch heute die Anlage einmal mit unserer Drohne von der Luft aus zeigen.
the next day was even nicer than yesterday, but the strong wind was remaining as forecasted. So I was jogging again at 8 in the morning and realized that fishing could be possible in the inner scaries. Sepp and I were driving out at 1 pm. We stayed in the inner scaries and were fishing for halibut in the deeper channels between the many small islands. Wir sind jetzt trotz Sturms herausgefahren und verstecken uns hier in den Scheren. Unmittelbar beim Hafenausgang. Wir angeln hier seit einer Stunde, aber leider erfolglos. Aber immer noch besser als in der Unterkunft sinnlos herumzusitzen. Between the scaries fishing was still possible with a drift of around 2 km per hour. We were trying it with a wide range of baits, but we could not encourage a halibut to bite. After two and a half hour, when the wind was getting up again, we had enough and were driving home at 3.30 pm. The next day was sunny and windy again. These two Norwegians had hauled in their crab traps early in the morning. Nach drei Ausfallstagen, trotz schönem Wetter, aber bei sehr starkem Wind, hat es uns nicht mehr länger in den Unterkünften gehalten. Wir müssen raus. Sepp switched to Gerald's boat today. Tony and I were staying at home because of the still very strong wind. They were fishing near the island Storhafsula and tried to catch some of the large coalfish there. We are here in the west of the Insel Selvia, außerhalb the last Scherninsel, in the depths of 120 to 140 meters. Ich sehe sehr rau. Jedoch es ist machbar. While they were only hooking redfish as bycatch at this depth, I was exploring the island of Selve in the afternoon. Around 6 pm, Gerald, Ernie and Sepp were coming back from their fishing trip. Unfortunately, they couldn't catch one of the big coalfish. Only a few redfish as bycatch were in the fish box. 
After a wonderful sunset and the following dinner, I was ending the day in the jacuzzi under the open sky. There was no strong wind anymore and we were more than ready to start in a great day of fishing. However, when Sepp and I wanted to leave at 8 am, the oil lamp was lighting red after I started the engine. Now we had to wait a complete hour for the technician. Then he informed us that the engine has only to be serviced the next time. After waiting an hour for nothing, we could hardly wait to arrive at the Plateau Langtaren. There we were targeting on Halibut again. We were there at 9 am and decided to try it in deeper water around 100 meters first. Nach den Stürmen in den letzten Tagen ist der Wind heute auf ein erträgliches Maß zurückgegangen. Und wir sind in den Süden gefahren, äh, südöstlich von Trena und versuchen hier jetzt zu Beginn in der Früh auf äh, Dorsch und Selax zu angeln. Heute ist unser vorletzter Angeltag. Äh, langsam wird es Zeit, dass wir auch größere Fische fangen. Nach 30 Minuten sind wir wieder in die Sandrinnen auf Heilbutt gefahren, weil der Wind zugenommen hat und die Drift draußen einfach zu stark ist. While Sepp and I were trying to catch a Halibut in the south, Gerald, Ernie and Tony were fishing for cod and coalfish in the north. They did very well because they were able to fill their fish box with cod up to 14 kilos. Heute sensationelle Bedingungen ganz nördlich der Insel Selvia. Annähernd windstill, leichte Wellen, leichter Wellengang, traumhaftes Wetter. Und zusätzlich hatten wir auch Glück in Tiefen zwischen 80 und 100 Metern einige Dorsche zu erwischen. Auch ein schöner Schellfisch ist dabei. Unfortunately, the coalfish didn't reach this size and were all released. Aber das habe ich gerissen. In the afternoon, Gerald's boat was visited by Ott, who had hauled in some of his nets. How are you doing? <laughs> A little bit. A little bit? One hour about, about 30 kilos. Oh, that's nice, that's nice. In the deep. In the deep. How deep? 100 meter. 108. 108, yeah. Yeah, we've been over there and we got a lot of torsk. Up to 14 kilogram. That's nice. While the sea in the north was almost like a mirror, the wind was visibly stronger in the south. Sepp was trying everything from his bait box, but was only rewarded with a brosme today. Or should I better say, 
screwed by the sea. Herrlich, Hilda. At 3 p.m. we were giving up and had to realize that the Halibut didn't want to play with us this year. When I was at home, I was making another trip into the nature and was able to watch a wonderful sunset. Our last fishing day was coming. In the morning, Sepp waked our cool boxes to see if there was still space for a few fillets. At 9.15 am we started with both boats. We were fishing again in the northern part of the island where the local fisherman Ott had laid out his nets. Gerald's boat was starting fishing on the plateau Revet, while Sepp and I were targeting on Halibut again in a kilometer long drift. Here am Revet, nun durch Nummer 3, Größenordnung 6-7 Kilo, wunderschöne Dorsche, die wir alle wieder freilassen. Because our freezer boxes were already full, Gerald, Tony and Ernie stopped fishing at 2 p.m. Sepp and I continued fishing until 5 p.m. because the weather was too good to stop. We were fishing for hours with four rods and various baits, but nothing was successful. Slowly, Sepp was losing his mind. Herrliche Bedingungen hier! Vor Selvia wenig Wind. Nichts, nicht ein Scheiß Trainer gibt. Nicht, nicht einmal ein Scheiß wie Sven Gerci. Nichts, ich erschlag dich. Nichts. Feierausbeute hat selbst eben Kund getan. <lacht> ich trat durch. Boot. At the end, he was not really rewarded for his efforts. Only a small redfish whose ego was too big. At 4.30 pm, finally the time was coming and a big halibut had taken my bait. It didn't move at a depth of 110 meters for minutes. Unfortunately, when the fish was starting a fast running, the hook failed. However, this attack had left visible cuts on the dead bait. With this last strike, we also ended our last day of fishing. At postcard weather, we were driving home at 4 p.m.
Finally, our day of departure was coming. Our fishing equipment was packed fast and at 12 noon the ferry took us to the neighboring island of Joena where a three hour stopover was necessary. We used the time to take a closer look at the island. At 3.15 p.m. the ferry continued to Stockwagen. After three additional stops, the ferry was docking safely in the harbor at 5.45. The same day we were driving by car another two hours to Mosjoen, where our first overnight stay was. On the next morning our journey continued to Tunset, where we had to spend another night in a Norwegian cottage. We had no other choice to sleep two nights in Norway on our trip back because the ferry from Selvia arrives Stockwagen only late in the afternoon. On the next day, after a four and a half hour trip, we arrived Oslo, where the ferry to Kiel was waiting for us. Now you have seen that always catching big fish is not so easy. Cold fish and cod fishing was very good on the few days where the weather conditions allowed fishing outside, but the halibut didn't want to play with us this year. At this point my team and I would like to thank you very much for the great feedback on our first video. This motivates us to continue reporting from our next fishing trips. If you want to support us, please subscribe our channel. My English is not perfect, but I think it's better than just having English subtitles. Stay healthy and all the best!